This is Akashwani. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on advancement in agriculture value chain through Internet of Things and Artificial Intelligence. The participants are Deepak Parikh, Agricultural Economist, and Arjun Chaudhary, Anchor. I'm joined by Sri Deepak Parikh, who is an agricultural economist and an entrepreneur. And today's uh, topic of discussion is on the advancement in the agriculture value chain through the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence. Uh, and uh, for the uh, benefit of our listeners on Akash uh, Vani, could you tell us what the agriculture value chain is and what's the benefit of of artificial intelligence uh, and more importantly the data management that comes with it yes sure say so we when we start from all the way from the farm to the fork everything which comes in between managing of the food commodities in uh, non processed form when you are buying from the farmers then taking it to aggregator the whole logistic involved into that storage warehousing of that and from there moving it to a processor or moving it to those who would be milling it and finally taking it to the restaurant or a food processing industry and finally getting to your table in form of uh, cooked food, uh, agriculture commodities like dal and atta. All that, everything, all the steps involved in between is typically the part of the value chain of agriculture. Now, artificial intelligence and uh, data science plays a very vital role because we all know that there is a substantial food loss which happens for post-harvest, typically from the farm to fork. Uh, one of the reasons is that actually logistic is not optimized. There is a challenge of right storage, ensuring that the warehouse is having all the environmental uh, condition required to store the specific commodities. So because of that, a lot of wastage has happened. So for typically uh, non-perishable, it is between 12 to 18 percent and perishable typically, like, you know, when we talk about fruits and vegetables, it goes sometimes to as high as 30 percent. Now, this is where uh, data science, artificial intelligence, uh, Internet of Things plays a very vital role. First thing on the quality assaying. So we can use artificial intelligence based computer vision to ascertain what is the quality of the commodity when it comes directly from the farmer. So at the mandi level or at the aggregation level, we are able to identify the quality of the agriculture commodity itself. And based on that, you can have a dynamic pricing and also understand that where and how it needs to be stored. So in case you see that the material is having suboptimal level of uh, condition, then it has to be put in what type of storage is. And the next level is that actually the logistic itself. So whether you, the carrier which is taking your perishable, does it have the right ambient temperature? Is it maintaining the moisture? All those things can be controlled using uh, IOV devices, which you'll find that in this uh, refrigerated containers are. Then when it go to the storage itself, the storage is the inward, outward, and everything in between, like you know where it was stored, how it was stored, whether the temperature was maintained at the right level or not. All those things, again, that data can be utilized. While doing all those things, finally, when it comes to the end user, right, if you are using end-to-end -end traceability, you'll be able to have a QR code which will tell you when this produce was harvested, uh, when it was stored, when it came to, like, you know, a specific processing facility, and finally, when it ends up at your table, is it in the right condition or not? So that is where, actually, like, you know, the artificial intelligence and data science can first ensure that optimum logistic can lead to reduction in the losses of the food product. And I believe that it's food item uh, it get wasted in the transit so this is one part where actually like you save a lot of uh, resources because the wastage is reduced second it gives the comfort to the end user that the food which i am buying it is safe or not so i think these two very critical aspect of agriculture value chain which can be taken care of uh, using artificial intelligence and data science to make it more efficient, economical, at the same time, trustworthy. So you have uh, spoken in detail about at least two issues, uh, crop wastage and uh, quality control of uh, food materials. Uh, the World Economic Forum has also identified, citing the Saga Sagu Bagu pilot project in Telangana, that there are other issues also, including market fluctuations and market access. Uh, how are these issues uh, resolved through artificial intelligence, uh, especially when we talk Talk about uh, market price fluctuations. Yes, so actually, market prices are uh, outcome of supply and demand and market sentiments. And these two things, again, if we are having the right sort of data, typically historical time series data, we would be able to analyze and find out actually what would be the prospective or predictable prices going forward. So let's take example of like, you know, pigeon pea or tuar dal. Now, based on your historical data, you'll be able to find actually when the prices are typically high. So typically when the harvest happens, prices are a little bit low. And as we move towards uh, like, you know, month of uh, June, July, August, the prices generally go up. 
Now that gives the opportunity for the farmer that in case uh, like you know with support of financial institution or even if they have their own financial muscle, they can store the material and they can sell actually when the prices are high. And this is where uh, artificial intelligence play a very vital role because it's good for predictive analytics and hence you can predict the price. Second part is that it's just not the supply and demand data but also sentiments. So artificial intelligence can listen to all the chatter which is happening relevant to the specific commodity in WhatsApp charts, on social media, as well as news sources. And based on that, it can come up with the sentiment whether it is a bearish or bullish. And uh, if you add supply and demand and uh, the sentiment along with like, you know, if some weightage is given to the policy making also, import and export policy and the storage policy, stock limit policy of the government, you'll be able to have a fairly good idea with I'm saying that variation of 8 to 10 percent about what it could be the forecasted price or whether the prices would be at a specific level which would be profitable for the farmer or not and based on that they can actually like you know decide when they want to liquidate their material rather than liquidating at the time just after harvest when the prices are low so this is where actually by forecasting prices in more uh, efficient manner uh, you can help farmer to get better realization for their produce so is this supply side economics we're talking about or is it uh, focused on demand see generally if you see that in majority of the commodities demand side are pretty stagnant because uh, generally except like you know when we are having some disruption like covid generally demand doesn't actually is not very inflexible right what happens is that suddenly like you won't see that uh, for example demand of tuar dal in india is not like you know 4.2 million metric ton it is not going to happen that actually overnight it is going to be 5 million metric ton. So those are typically like an you know, inflexible. So there are uh, on the demand side, the challenge is not much. The challenge is on in agriculture is on the supply side because for because of bad weather, because of like you know some of the origin from where we import our commodities, if something goes wrong there, or if there is a sudden uh, change in the policy, whether at the origin or whether by the government of India, suddenly you find that like you know the supply side economics change extensively. And this is where I believe like you know AI can play a far better role. Then demand side because like you know for a country of like 1.4 billion people it is very difficult to like you know exactly predict the demand and uh, with like you know so many different interconnected markets like you know we are having so many states some are deficit states some are uh, also that uh, with surplus and uh, come out and ascertain the typical demand side it's a challenge and the demand uh, i'll say that fluctuation is also not that high as the supply side what about market access how is that issue resolved See, market access uh, is can be resolved because if you are having uh, availability data, that which material is available where, and that data can be used, for example, by coming out with an auction platform where the buyers and the farmers, for example, we are having a beautiful uh, government initiative called ENA, uh, while it is not using extensively artificial intelligence, but at least the data science where like, you know, a trader or a buyer can straight away like, you know, place an order to more than uh, 1700 odd uh, mandis across India. So that creates a more transparent environment and provide better access to the farmer. Could you also uh, talk about risks associated with farming in order to make it sustainable? How do you mitigate those risks? Uh, climate change, pestilence and financial burden on farmers. We can start with climate change because that's something that even the consumer feels in their day to day life. Now, see, climate change issues we are already facing. Right. This year, if you see that, like, you know, there has been a challenging uh, climatic condition in India, both during the Kharif and the Ravi season. Because of that, we are seeing that, like, you know, the productivity of chickpeas, that is Chana, has reduced substantially. Same has happened with uh, PGLP. We are seeing that challenge also happening in May. And uh, last year, we had challenges with the wheat. So you see that climate uh, impact is already there because now we are seeing that uh, the monsoon is not as... Uh, I'll say that smooth as it used to be. So past three years has been very challenging and uh, we can see that impact of climate change. We're also seeing that severe heat stress on the crops. Generally in the March, you find that in northern part of India, you were having a pretty decent cool environment. But uh, nowadays, like, you know, the temperature goes as high as like, you know, 20 to 30 degrees, which is, I'm saying that borderline case for a crop like wheat. And anything about that, it will reduce the yields of the wheat. So climate change is already happening now. Only way is that uh, currently I won't say that uh, the AI technology is capable enough to even like, you know, have a better pred prediction of uh, the weather. Because like, you know, when we see weather in totality as in India, then like, you know, we lose in the macro picture. The micro picture are very different. For example, like, you know, if you are having three districts with def excess deficit and three districts with uh, excess, then you said that there is a normal monsoon. But actually, three districts have been uh, impacted badly because of drought and three districts have been impacted by flood. So this is where I say that nuanced approach where like, you know, the micro level uh, weather parameters need to be monitored 
And based on that, uh, new algorithms need to be developed so that we are able to predict the impact of climate change in a far better way than what we are doing today. So currently, we have not, I'll say, that uh, mastered the technology. And going forward, I think uh, AI would be equipped uh, more with more and more data coming in to be able to predict weather in a better way. So let's talk about uh, legacy risks, uh, pestilence and financial burden on farmers borrowing from local lenders. Pestilence, of course, means that you have uh, the risk of pests and how it's supposed to be controlled using pesticides uh, in order to mitigate this risk of uh, disease. So how is that mitigated? You see, this is the beauty where AI has played a very substantial role. Like, you know, it has mitigated risk for sure. Uh, because like, you know, based on the weather pattern and the historical data, you can predict actually what would be the like you know, chances of a specific type of pest infesting your crop, whether it is pink ballworm or stem borers, because you know that uh, these type of pests, this is what like, you know, the best suitable climate for them. So when you are able to get like, you know, that in information, you'll be able to predict that actually the chances of uh, specific pest attacking, whether it is 30%, 40% or 50%. And based on that, you can always take a preventive action. So this is where actually like, you know, there has been a lot of, uh, I'll say the positive development where uh, just like, you know, identification of the pest or like, you know, predicting a frustration has become very easy. Uh, with the click of a button and a, a photograph of a leaf, right, uh, you are able to find out actually which pest is infested in your crop and then you can immediately take a remedy election by the farmer by application of pesticide or other, uh, I'll say that, related pest management uh, activities. So this is where uh, I'll say that AI has been able to reduce to a certain extent uh, the impact of pests for sure. In that, we are also seeing that like, you know, development of new biological technologies that have also like, you know, impacted substantially because these biologicals, they are capable of uh, handling uh, some of the pests which have not been like, you know, tackled well by conventional pesticide, specifically I'm talking about nematodes and all that. So definitely AI and biotechnology, they have to a certain extent uh, given relief to the farmer when it comes to the pest infestation. Now coming to the financial burden, I would say that financial burden part of it, it is more of a policy and uh, the farmer's own understanding of like, you know, how the financials work, which is more important because here you won't be able to find like, you know, that AI being able to do a lot, except like for definitely financial institutions. Sometimes what happens is that when they are using some of these uh, AI technologies, specifically when they tie it up with the remote sensing, they are able to ascertain risk about the a specific farmer in a better way than they used to do it in the past. But uh, has that impacted farmer positively? I don't believe that has happened. Farmer are still dependent on like, you know, credit from either the government systems or through like, you know, the local lenders. And for both of them, like, you know, CI or any digital technology has not been able to do much of impact. Let's talk about uh, artificial intelligence for uh, artificial innovation. And this is by the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution when we talk about sustainable uh, farming. Tell us about this, which has uh, caught uh, the attention of the World Economic Forum uh, this January. Yeah, sure. So like, you know, luckily I was uh, the first person from India. And in fact, I believe like, you know, in, in uh, Global South, who was awarded as a technology pioneer by the World Economic Forum for the using artificial intelligence in agriculture way back, I think, in 2018. In fact, I was also the initial uh, part of the people who were in, involved in uh, conceptualizing the idea of AI for AI and how it can be implemented in India. Uh, see, we all understand that agriculture is a very critical sector, right? Going forward, uh, even World Economic Forum understand that the food security and nutritional security is one of the big challenge and risk. And again, uh, food is directly like connected to the climate change itself because agriculture is not just the victim, but is also a culprit of creating uh, environmental damage because close to like, you know, 20 to 30% of greenhouse gases is outcome of agricultural activity just after energy. Similarly, 70% of uh, all the fresh water uh, is being used in agriculture. So these are two critical risks, even World Economic Forum understand that. And how to make this agriculture more efficient so we start using less water, we are having little lesser negative impact on environment when we are doing agriculture or farming. That is like, you know, I just not World Economic Forum, but I think every organization, medical agency across the world, uh, they are looking at it. In fact, uh, very recently I was in Dubai for COP28. Even there, the first time agriculture was discussed extensively because uh, the world started believing that uh, to address to the climate change issue, we have to address the challenges of the agriculture first. And this is where I believe AI plays a very vital role because with the right simulation models, uh, as well as like, you know, advancement of technology, whether it is about pest detection, whether it is about health of your crop and the proper monitoring of like, you know, how much resources, specifically water is being used. And last but not least, actually the soil organic carbon content. All these factors can be very well monitored by remote sensing and uh, drones or satellite. 
at the same time with the sensors and that data can be captured and again analyzed by AI machine learning tools to give you a, a better perspective of what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. So I believe like, you know, the whole of the world would be adopting agriculture technology, specifically AI and machine learning, remote sensing and uh, IoT uh, with, with more uh, interest and with more uh, investment. Well, thank you so much, uh, Deepak Parikji, for talking to us extensively. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on advancement in agriculture value chain through Internet of Things and Artificial Intelligence. The participants were Deepak Parikh, Agricultural Economist, and Arjun Chaudhuri, Anchor. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashvani.